Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jackie. And let's get started. And today we'll be doing my 22 favorite crafting and DIYing hacks, tips, and tricks. And all original videos will be listed in my description box below. And for numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, I'm going to go in with the Mod Podge this time. I'm not doing the plastic wrap. And I like to use this Freeman makeup brush. It's like a mask brush to do my Mod Podge because it's, the bristles are really soft. And the Mod Podge goes on very smoothly. So I just really, really like this little brush for my Mod Podge. So I go ahead and add a thin layer on this whole front of the Mod Podge and allow it to dry. And now I picked up these chevron napkins from the Dollar Tree in the party section. And these particular napkins had three plies on them. So <laughs> once I got all the plies removed and all I had was the very top ply, then I went ahead and placed this on the hello portion of this sign. And on the bottom portion, I'm going to do a yellow tissue paper, just a regular old tissue paper. And now I'm just going to adhere this napkin ply onto my sign with my mini easy press. So here I'm just finishing up, adding another piece on the top. And I'll go ahead and do the bottom too. And so what happens is when you place this heat, it kind of activates the Mod Podge that's dried on there and everything fuses like magic. So here I'm removing the excess pieces for other projects. I'm not throwing this away of course but I'm just removing the extra pieces and now we're about to have a little bit of fun with this lighter I'm just going to take this lighter and take the flame and get all the excess tissue paper and napkin paper to just burn right off look at that it's almost like magic the things we learn on TikTok I tell you <laughs> I will tell you this if you're scared of fire don't do this because it goes pretty quick so but I'm, I'm fearless. I just, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> I just kept going. <laughs> but look at this. This is so cool. <laughs> this is fun. So once I get all this done, then I'll go in with my finger sander and sand off any excess pieces. I kind of like the way it looks because if you look closely, you'll see it in the, in the final reveal how the burn lines you see little burn lines on the edges oh my goodness that is such a cute effect so here i'm taking my my ladybug to help clean up all the excess paper everywhere <laughs> it was everywhere <laughs> but see here's my sander and i'm just sanding off anything extra because there's just tiny little pieces here and there but yeah i also use my nail file to or not a nail file emery board and now I'm going back in with my mini press to make sure everything is nice and sealed on all the edges. And look at that, it's looking so cute. Okay, so now I picked up this other napkin. This was from Amazon as well, removed the layers on it. I think this one had three layers as well. I don't know why they do them so thick. <laughs> Doesn't make our job easier at all. So here, once I remove it, I, th I thought this napkin was really cute. All the little bees, so cute. So now I'm just going to take a little paintbrush and a little bit of water. And I'm going to go around the bees to help rip them out. That way the lines aren't so harsh. That way it's nice. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice gentle tear. So here I'm tearing them out. And I think I'm using three. Put everything away for another time and now continue to rip off some of these pieces and now all i have to do is take some mod podge and i'm just going to wait i'm just going to just decoupage these on there like a normal decoupage style just the mod podge and then i do go back over with my mini heat press to make sure all the edges are nice and tight on there and sealed and nothing's going to come apart and so once I get that done, remove this really easily because there is Mod Podge, but it does a really good job. And here's how it looks for number five. And now here's my lighter again. <laughs> Have to burn all the fuzzies and you can tell where the fuzzies are because you'll see the jute twine kind of like spark up a little bit and you'll know that there were fuzzies. 
so yeah and I like how it gives it like a burnt look as well and it smells pretty good too I gotta say <laughs> it smells good <laughs> so yeah so I'm just gonna keep doing this until I remove all the little fuzzies that way it's nice and clean gives it more of a high-end look it looks more polished more put together so now I'm just gonna go in with these embellishments and go to town I don't show all this because this took me a little while and here's how it looks and now on to numbers six and seven I'm going to take the second honey dipper that I had painted and I'm going to roll this around in my faux honey as well just this glitter glue from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna give it a nice good coverage of my glue and since this is glue I'm just gonna add my little B on top and skip a step now I'll set that aside, let allow that to set, and now I'm just taking a variety of beads and I'm just going to string them on a jute twine in this pattern to create a wood beaded garland. So now I'm taking this wood dabber and I'm just going to add a little dab of glue and I'm going to wrap some of this jute twine around. Now I could have very easily just taken a drill and made a hole through it and just placed the jute twine through the hole, but my drill doesn't work, so that was that. This was plan B and this worked just fine. So if you don't have a drill, this is what you do. And once you're done wrapping it around, just take a little bit of hot glue to secure one end and then snip off the excess and create a triple knot tying the two ends together. And now we're gonna take a little bit of hot glue and kind of adhere the two ends together on the very end. Here you'll see where I add a little dab, tiny little dab, and I kind of roll it. And then I'll put it back up on the first two or three beads that way it secures that end and you won't even know where the ends at and now I just take all the beads and push them all the way to the other side that way it's nice and tight through the side and now I'm going to tie these two together in the same manner I did the other end tying it, tying it a nice triple knot and snipping off the excess taking a little dab of glue and rolling it rolling the two ends together to create one piece and poking it back up a couple of the beads so now here's a little stray piece so now I'm just gonna take a little dab of glue place it on the knot and place a little wooden bee so cute so here's how it looks super cute and now on to number eight so here it is I'll set it aside to dry and now here I'm going to show you how I made the bees and the honeycombs and if you missed it on my last video with the Arteza mica powders these molds from Amazon they're made out of silicone the B ones still have a little bit of mica powder inside of them I left them that way and I'm just going to fill them up with these gold glitter glue sticks from the Dollar Tree they're the mini ones and I'm simply just filling in all these gaps with the hot glue and make sure the glue is nice and hot that's easier if it's nice and hot so I just did a few of the bees because I already had extras from my last video and on the honeycomb this is the first time I'm using the honeycombs so I ended up doing, I think, the four. No, I, I ended up doing five. Five of the honeycombs until I ran out of the glue. And once the whole honeycomb is full with the hot glitter glue, I'm just going to take two of these silicone spatulas and press down to make sure that it gets into all the nooks and crannies. I want all the details that these silicone molds have to offer. So I place that one aside. I do another one here real quick. The last three, I do them off camera just because of time. Otherwise, this video would be a lot longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> so here I'm just pressing everything down. And again, the hotter the glue, the easier it is to do this. You just got to make sure it's set before you pull off the silicone spatulas. It sets pretty quickly. So now I'm ready to unmold them. And here are my cute little bees. Look how adorable. Oh my goodness, these are so cute. Just so, so cute. And if there's any extra glue sticking out of them, just take some detail scissors and snip off any of the excess glue. And here are the cute honeycombs. Embellish them with the little honeycombs. So I'm going to place them in a manner that the majority of the honeycomb will be able to be used. Anything excess, I'll just snip off with my detail scissors. And once I get that the way I want it, then I'll just add a little bit of glue and adhere it to my little bee houses. And I'll just continue this until I get them all embellished with my cute honeycombs and some of them are a little bit different in shape in the coloring the glue sticks the glue sticks weren't all the same shade of gold but that's okay that just makes everything look a little bit different and so now i'm going to add all my bee houses to my truck and i'm just simply going to take a little bit of hot glue 
and adhere them. And here's how they look. Super cute. On to number nine. I'm going to use this mangled up <laughs> trellis from the Dollar Tree. I used it for another project, so I just figured I'll just use this piece as well. And to take these apart, all you have to do is kind of wiggle it back and forth and the welds will just pop off very easily. So here I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to use. At this point, I'm not really sure. I'm just trying to figure it out and you'll see the process here. So I'm just going to use my needle nose pliers and kind of do some rounds, some swirls. And for the most part, it's working pretty well. I do end up removing another piece that I felt like wasn't working. And then I grabbed another piece that came off the other end. So yeah, this is basically my thought process and I'm just gonna speed it up a little bit so you guys can see. And here's how it looks. And now on to number 10 and number 11. These MDF cutting boards that my friend Tammy from Happiness Created sent me and I'm gonna pop off the top. And I'm going to take some paper towels and soak this up with some water that way I can remove the paper up top easily and I don't put anything in the center because the paper was removed when I removed the top. So I let it sit for about 30 minutes and now with my scraper I just scrape off all the paper. It just comes off really easily and I remove all the adhesive that's on there. It's like a water soluble adhesive. Clean it up and wipe it down until it's nice and clean and now I'm ready to create something pretty with it. So now that I have it nice and clean, I'm going to take some Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to try this method that I found out by accident. I've never seen anybody else do it, but I figured it out by accident. So I'm going to do it on here and I'm going to show you more than I usually show because I, to me it's new. So I'm just going to add some water to it and I'm just going to brush it up and down the whole part, the whole thing. And I'm going to take my heat gun and as I'm adding heat to dry it, I'm going to continue to brush up and down. And this kind of creates a faux wood kind of look. So if you can look, if you can see, it starts forming, it starts showing and you can see it. It's looking like a real cutting board. I, I thought that was so cool. You guys gotta let me know if you've seen this method before or not. And here's how it looks. And on to numbers 12 and 13. And now I'm going to go in with this really pretty lemon fabric. This is a crafter square from the Dollar Tree. And I like how it has all the lemons and then it's got the little bit of blue in there. I just thought this was perfect. So I'm just going to cut it to size so it'll fit on there pretty well. And I'm going to take my Mod Podge and literally saturate it with it because whenever you use Mod Podge and fabric, you, it, you just have to make sure you saturate your piece very well and smooth out your fabric. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing to, to the top and just add a ton of Mod Podge. I mean, really get it really well and saturated. Allow this to dry. And now I'm gonna go in with my X-Acto knife and use a nice sharp blade. And if you added enough Mod Podge, this will cut off really easily. You won't have any problems. So here it is, it came right off. And here's how it looks. And now on to 14, 15, and 16. I'm going to begin with two of these wooden flowers from the Dollar Tree and one of these Lazy Susan uh, turntables from Amazon and 10 of these crates from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna begin with the flowers and I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to fill in these holes. So I'm just placing my silicone spatula in the back and filling up the hole and then pressing in any glue until they're all filled up. And it's just two holes, so it didn't take long. So now here they are, all nice and filled, ready to paint. And I'm gonna go in with this Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint, give, the, give them a good coat. And now I'm going to adhere this Lazy Susan turntable from Amazon. I'll link everything in my Amazon storefront. I always have that link listed in my description box. And I'm going to go in with some of the E6000 and placing a nice bead of glue on each corner and also a combination of the hot glue, but not mixed together, just separately. 
and then I'll flip this over and center it on my wood flower and I'll repeat the process for the other flower just put a couple beads of glue of the E6000 and then some of the hot glue but don't mix them you'll defeat the purpose if you mix them so here's the top one and I just press it down and make sure it's nice and tight and look at that this whole thing turns now and now I'm going to take one more of these wooden flowers and I'm going to remove this sticker of course flip it over and I'm going to place this lid that belongs to one of my plastic candy jars that I use for crafting and I'm going to trace a circle in the center and then I'm going to take this outside and cut off the center piece so here it is nice and ready and I'll go in with the same white Adirondack chalk paint that I used earlier and this will be the top of my little setup so now I'm going to work on the crates and I'm going to use my utility knife to cut these off these sides and if you've been following me for a while you know I like to do this kind of thing I like to cut balsa wood items and create other things so I'm just going to carefully cut straight down and if you have a sharp blade it'll cut down pretty easily and I do the same thing to all 10 of these crates and just like this in the magic of YouTube they're done <laughs> So now here I'm going to place these pieces aside and not throw them away. I'll use them for something else in the future. And I'm going to join these two crates together. And you can definitely use wood glue for this, but I like to use the Elaine's Tacky Glue. I've always had very good results with it. So it's my glue of choice for just adhering these wood crates together, which I like to do pretty often. <laughs> okay, so here I'm going to place one on top of the other, join them together as best I can. And if they don't line up, if the lines don't line up perfectly, not to worry. These crates are not always made exactly the same. So here I'm just wiping off any excess glue and I'm going to allow it to dry in this position. And I'll do the same thing to the rest of these crates until I have five towers like this. Now they're all nice and dry. And now I'm gonna go in with my Folk art chalk paint again in the white Adirondack color and give them a full paint job like this and now I'm going to start assembling my paint holder and here's my lazy Susan working really nice and here I'm just gonna stage everything how I want it so I'm going to place these towers where each petal is so that's why there's five total if the, if the flower had another petal I definitely would have tried to fit another one <laughs> okay so here I'm going to a different angle so you guys can see and here I'm going to adhere them all with just some hot glue it works well enough and I'll adhere them all onto this wood flower until they, they're all nice and adhered now all I have to do is adhere the third flower on the very top until it's all nice and set up and look at that it works perfectly exactly what I needed for my craft room and I wanted to share with you guys but it fits all my chalk paste perfectly and my florals in the center just makes it so pretty and not to mention how effortlessly it just spins around so handy and they were eight dollars for four of them so I only used one so that cost me two dollars and so this hardware is pretty cool. I'll link it in my description box. And so all I'm doing is I'm taking one of these melamine plastic plates from the Dollar Tree. And I'm taking some E6000 and placing it on the Lazy Susan hardware and some hot glue as well. And I'm just going to place this in the center of the bottom or the underside of the plate and look so cute and now I'm taking one of these fancy round serving trays from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to do the same process I'll place some E6000 and some hot glue on the metal piece of this Lazy Susan hardware and I'll place my tray 
on top of it and center it as best I can like this flip it over to make sure it's centered properly press it down and look what do you guys think And for number 17 piece, which happens to be a pin, it's got the backing on it, but I don't need it. So I'm going to use my needle nose pliers and just pry it off. So once I get that removed, then I'm going to see if it fits, fits perfectly. And I'm going to get my E6000 and add some E6000 all along the points of this beautiful embellishment. This is perfect. It looks just like a beautiful turtle shell. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. And I'm just going to add it on top, place it on there, and wipe off any excess glue that I might have gotten on there. Don't want any glue showing. And I'm going to use these laundry clips to keep it in place and allow it to sit overnight so it'll set. Now here it is the next day, nice and dry and nice and set. And here's how it looks. Super cute. And on to number 18. And so here is my shower curtain that I fussy cut. Not perfectly, but somewhat. But it's, it's good enough for me. So here I'm going to go in with some of the Elaine's Tacky Glue to adhere all these pieces on this pumpkin. And in hindsight, I wish I would have painted the pumpkin white. I was at the time going for a black and blue kind of color scheme for that particular video. So that's why I left the pumpkin black. But now when I finished this DIY, I realized that maybe would have been better to paint the pumpkin white and you'll see what I mean at the end but it still came out really cute and very unusual very unusual and mind you this is a Dollar Tree shower curtain so you know how thin these things are <laughs> it's a really odd and unusual type of plastic but here I'm just taking my time and I'm adhering all these pieces of shower curtain around this pumpkin and I'm going to allow this to dry overnight until it looks like this. And now for the fun part. Now I'm going to take some parchment paper and this one happens to be Reynolds brand. And I'm just going to place it on top of the foam pumpkin. And with this mini iron, I'm just going to lightly tap it and keep tapping it and tapping it. And I'll do it all around the pumpkin until all the plastic is melted into the foam pumpkin like literally fused on there yes it is and so let me tell you there's a few little things that i learned from this technique i've never done this before but look at that okay for the most part it's done and what i've learned this is the first time i've done this so what i've learned is do not let the heat touch the actual foam pumpkin because it'll burn it like this and also don't leave it on too long because it'll burn through the plastic other than that so here is here's a couple bubbles so I'll put the parchment paper on top and I'm showing you in real time real quick here's my little iron and all I'm going to do is barely just barely press it like this and that's just enough that's it that's it let, let the parchment paper cool down and then just peel it up and press it down and there it is let me see if I can find another spot that needs attention I think okay right here this little spot here it's close to the foam but I'm just going to touch the white so just right here I'm just going to touch this that's it there it is. See? And this is how it looks. Very unusual indeed. And on to number 19. And now I'm going to take some plastic wrap, just good old plastic wrap from the Dollar Tree, nothing fancy, no name brand. And I'm going to snip off a nice piece that will fit these planks. So I'll use actually four pieces of this plastic wrap. But here I'm just cutting the one and I'm going to place it on one of these planks like this and my fan is on so you might see my stuff flying around a little bit 
here I'm taking this really pretty napkin and these came from Amazon and I'll have everything linked in my Amazon storefront for you guys and my link is always in my description box but look how beautiful these are and I'm just going to take this down to one ply and I'm going to place this napkin in a position where I'd like the graphics to appear on my plank and now I'm going to place some parchment paper on top to protect everything and with my mini press my Cricut mini press I'm going to just adhere or should I say fuse this plastic and this uh, napkin onto this wood plank so the first part is pretty easy just remove the parchment paper with no trouble and snip off the excess with some scissors and then I'll go in with my finger sander and I'll sand off all the excess napkin paper and the plastic and I'll just go around this whole piece and make sure to sand everything off it sands off perfectly there's no excess paper anywhere no excess plastic anywhere almost like it was created that way with this beautiful print and these lemons are like in the French tone like French uh, style very cute so here I'm placing another piece of plastic this time I think I turned the fan off finally <laughs> and now I'm placing my parchment paper back on top and I'm going to use my easy press again and go over the whole piece especially all the edges I want to make sure all the edges are nice and fused now this part here you can't remove this parchment paper right away because you just have it on the plastic so you have to just take it slow and remove it real slowly so here's the excess plastic and now you do the same thing with the finger sander and just sand off all the extra and excess plastic and now this piece is sealed so it's fused with with the plastic wrap and it's also sealed with the plastic wrap as well so it's a really cool trick hack very very cute and it comes out really pretty so look at that wow so now go ahead and do the other plank the same way and here's how it looks and now on to number 20. So now i picked up this fabric at walmart and i mod podged it to a piece of foam board actually no it's poster board and also i picked up some of this cute ribbon from the dollar tree with the little graphics on it and i mod podged that on some poster board as well and so I'm going to use this ribbon. I'm going to be cutting out all the little pieces on it to use it as embellishments for the gingerbread houses. And now I'm going to add the little pieces from the ribbon that I mod podged onto uh, poster board. I cut them out with my scissors. And now I'm cutting some of these little pieces of the, of the bamboo skewer and I'm going to create little lollipops on the front. So I'm just going to hot glue the little tiny pieces of bamboo skewer and some of the little peppermint candies from the ribbon that I cut out. And here's how it looks. And now on to number 21. And it's looking really cute. Everything's covered up perfectly except for the top part, the arch part. And I definitely want to cover that up. So I'm taking another one of these jumbo craft sticks and I'm just going to saturate it with some water and I could, I could have probably soaked it in water like in a tub or something or a bowl or dish but I just placed it on this parchment paper and just soaked it with my spray bottle and got it nice and soaked and then I just began to bend it into an arch shape so I just kept bending it and bending it and at first it was pretty stiff but I just kept soaking it and bending it and bending it until it finally stayed so i allowed it to dry and now look at that it fits almost perfectly i didn't even have to cut it look at that so i'm going to go ahead and adhere it with some hot glue and i'll go ahead and use some clamps on this as well just to make sure everything is nice and dry and everything will stay adhered and while the glue is setting and my craft stick is completely drying I'll embellish the arch window with some of these pine picks, some berries, and a couple little bows. 
and that is it we'll call this diy complete and here's how it looks and now on to number 22 taking one of these foam bunnies this is the larger size and some of these smaller bunnies and i'm gonna cover them all up with some spackle going a thorough full coat of spackle until they all dried up and look like this nice and hard and then i'm going to go in with some of this waverly chalk paint in the color elephant and give them all a full coat and with the waverly chalk paint in the color white i'm just going to do a light brushing with my chippy brush and look at this they look like stone bunnies and here's how they look super cute well i sure hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it's a little bit different but i really wanted to share my hacks, tips, and tricks that I use in my crafting. And if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you want to see more, definitely subscribe. And until my next video, stay healthy, safe, and strong. And have a great, great day. Bye-bye.